And we are back once again with the Think Fitness Life podcast. And this week, we're going to be discussing exercise tips as we've gone through mindset tips, nutrition tips. We figured we'd wrap it up with some exercise tips. But before we get started, my co-host uh, has some news. Menchi, take it away. Yeah, so uh, published in the Journal of American Medical Associations, and the the overall headline was, or the, the study was eating more gluten early in life is tied to children's high risk of celiac disease. Sounds pretty, pretty fair. So you go through the study and some of the, just the takeaway points, higher gluten intake between the ages of, well, since you're actually first born and five years old was associated with an increase of 6.1% of celiac disease or autoimmunity and immunological response to gluten. And then from there, there's a 7.2% increase risk of celiac disease per each additional gram of gluten per day. So it really should be a huge headline. And I really didn't see it a lot right out there. I feel like this is one should be a headline news saying, hey, if you're young, you have a young kids or are younger, you should limit the amount of gluten that you're taking. And that is stuff with bread, pasta, and anything baked goods. And it's now showing we've already known this for years. Hopefully it can come to the surface more that gluten is an actually bigger problem than people think it is. It's not just, there are some genetic underlyings that you can have certain genes that you can be more sensitive to gluten, but eating this more at a younger age is very problematic. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's really interesting when it comes to sort of like public awareness or public statements, um, talking about some of these disruptors because a lot of skeptics or non-believers or people who don't experience it look at this and just say like people are making it up or – you know, that's just that individual's problem. And there's plenty of people who, one, might not have any problem passing gluten because they have a thick mucosal barrier on their gut lining. And that's what that that's what your mucus is, is job is for foreign objects, um, to grab on that stuff and, and pass it through the body. Now, there is a, a smaller chemical, wheat germ gluten. It does actually... Um, seep through the mucosal barrier and the gut lining. And it actually mimics a lot of other um, neurotransmitters on a lot of receptors and can end up in joints and cause a lot of issues like arthritis and inflammation in areas you don't want. Um, that's that's the but, big one in gluten, right? Yeah. Wheat, wheat germ gluten yeah. is the really big disruptor. But, you know, it's funny because it just comes down to – uh, good and bad sources, right? There's good and bad proteins. There's good and bad fats. There's good and bad carbs. Um, gluten tends to be looked at more negatively. And I think that's just where we're at as a culture, because if you think of the American diet with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's just so gluten based and, you know, oats and breads and, uh, waffles and pancakes. And yeah, you can make these gluten free nowadays. It's, it's very true. So, you know, don't let me, uh, you know, put any dogma on any of these types of food, but at the same time, when you're eating this stuff constantly and you're, you're using up your, your amylase and your protease your enzymes in your body to digest these things, then it's just going to be like, a slow decline until eventually gluten is a disruptor. And um, long story short, it's just people don't fully understand it enough for it to be public knowledge like that because you have to also think that in terms of the media and the news cycle that there's a lot of other – 
influencers, we'll, we'll call them, um, that would look at the anti-gluten movement as a uh, encroachment on their business and their profit. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes into why uh, why that wouldn't be a headline or why that wouldn't be common knowledge um, and why we're still really only looking at the 10% of the iceberg on top of the water. There's still plenty to understand. Yeah. Because the thing is, is, is I've also gone through the route of like getting my own yeast, fermenting it like a little amount overnight, not using that much, but giving it time and then making my own bread. And it's more of like a, like a focaccia bread or like a, a non bread or like a flat bread pizza. And those typically have really low yeast amounts and they have really low gluten content. And I can pass them just fine. And I have ulcerative colitis. I should be able to, I should be eating that. And I should be bloody and explosive diarrhea in seconds, but I'm fine. So what it tells me is like the, you know, the, de- uh, what's the, the devil's in the dose essentially whether that means all at one time or a little bit at a time and too much frequency over weeks and months and years leading to celiac disease, which I just think disease is temporary. That's my personal It's got to be. The, that one at least because you're just – like you said, you're damaging that, that gut barrier. Let your body heal. We can't have – immune dysfunction and still want to be healthy like it doesn't work like that but the, so once you but have that immune dysfunction but i guess the, you're the, kind wait, of sorry. opening yourself up to a lot of other diseases and issues and i think it it's one of the, these things that should be more more put out there for the whole population to be able to read and be oh maybe what i've read so far Maybe these carbohydrate sources aren't optimal and I don't need them. What's what's crazy is um you know, I like the, how the study looked at children because at least it's gonna like open up parents' eyes and awareness to understanding a little bit more about this stuff and how it affects their children and kind of just the sourcing of where they're getting this stuff from. Cause it's not all bad if you can get um, a properly made bread from a proper bakery with proper ingredients. And again, you can get it gluten-free or you can get it low yeast or low gluten. Um, but it is um, it is certainly an area that needs to be um, kind of just more questions asked about it and rediscovered um, because – you know, we've eaten bread for 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 years and years and years and and ages, and um, it's hard for yeah. people to give that up mentally, and they don't they just don't understand it, like why why they have yeah. to give up gluten all of a sudden. But the bottom line is, is just really you just have to be aware of what you're putting in your body and the potential, right? So it's like like spinach for the most part, shouldn't be a disruptor for most people unless there's like a, a, a small trace chemical in it and they're super hypersensitive. But things like dairy, things like gluten, things like um, uh, excess sugars, even uh, spicy foods, little things like that that can be disruptors. It's just important to have little like asterisks next to everything when you eat yeah. something like like that that could be a potential um, harm to, to you or your, your body. And I think a lot of people don't realize too, is like, just cause you can eat it and digest it and, and quote unquote feel fine. doesn't mean it's not right. doing damage. I mean, you have to really, um, be kind of be scientific about it and people want to complain, but it's like, you, you got to be your best yeah. doctor. Essentially, you got to be able to at least be able to articulate to a doctor what you're feeling when things happen. Oh so, yeah. And, and it goes a long way with reading all this stuff. And I've been doing some other, some other reading and, and research kind of, I, you've said this a couple of times, maybe last season and this season that there's no such thing as essential carbohydrate. And the, I agree. With the that. more, you know, you kind of, I listen and I'm like, okay, yeah, Go on. you need carbohydrates. But if you're talking, 
a sedentary person or someone who doesn't work out, you're right. The, the cell doesn't need, like, it's not going to not function if there's not a carbohydrate. And the more I read and listen to it saying that you can get carbohydrates from certain, certain sources, but these, these carbohydrates in the American diet that are consumed nowadays are just garbage. There's no, there's no need for them in the body. They're not essential. Essentially there's, we can function on a diet of vegetables, fats, and protein. And that's where people should be for optimal health. Well, that's, what's kind of funny. Um, because I'm not even sure how the term carbohydrate come, came about because it should just be like starches, fats, um, proteins and yeah like that's it starches fats and proteins that should really be it but essentially simple carbohydrates are your sugars and your starches and complex carbohydrates are your resistant starches or fibers and the only difference between complex carbohydrates and resistant starches are literally the words that's it I don't know why they do that to people. It's just so fucking confusing. But what's crazy too is like things progress over time and then you get like paradigm shifts because a complex carbohydrate used to be things like like brown rice yeah. or whole wheat bread. And little did we know that the only reason they were complex is because they were so hard for our body to digest and process that that's what backed you up. But resistant starches are things that bulk up your stool. They aid in the time it takes for your body to digest because it takes slower for this mass to move through your colon at the same time you're allowing for more opportunity to absorb the good fats and the good proteins that you ate along with that here comes resistant starch or complex carbohydrate aka a white rice that was properly soaked and rinsed prior to cooking and a sweet potato that was either pressure cooked and then you can eat the skin or cooked in the oven and then you remove the skin. And now you have a, a great source of, of a, man, I just don't like the word carbohydrate. Yeah, it it's is. Just, but it is, it is a good, it's a good source of a carbohydrate. It's a good carbohydrate. And I think this is this probably, we don't want to get too crazy with it, but if you're not someone who's very physically active, your your necessity for carbohydrates should be low. Should be real low, way it low. Down. And oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I think that's where where now I'm kind of of shifting my focus into now is is that if you're really trying to optimize like weight loss or fat loss or even just be healthy, if you're even if you're three times a week, that's not high consistency in in my my case. You don't need to be eating carbohydrates at all. But, oh, it's a shame that uh, it took until, you know, basically 2018, 2019 for um, governmental agencies to recognize fats as healthy and a high fat diet as, yes, having certain risks, but when it went in conjunction with, with carbohydrates. But, you know, we've learned that a, a diet that consists of, carbohydrates so consistently eliminates your body's need for using its fat burning process because it's a little bit more of a of a complicated process that requires more a few systems and cycles to link up with each other so if i have dry kindling that's my carbohydrates sugars starches whatever you want to call it uh simple sugars if i have that dry kindling or if i have a, a log with bark on it like which one's going to take more time to get ready to throw in the fire and burn? Like my, your body's lazy. It's not, it's not, it's not even proper to say lazy. It's efficient. Your body is fucking efficient. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's it, it, uh, carbohydrates have stunted people and yeah. have led to the uptick in disease and health issues in this country. There's no question about it. So it'd be interesting to see that study and to see what their diets consist of it on like a whole level, you know, understanding agree. on a weekly basis what they're consuming. And I bet you could um, 
kind of link the two to the results and kind of make the gluten arbitrary. But um, yeah, it's just interesting to me because the more I, I dive into a study, I just find uh, kind of where like who influenced it, who paid for it, you know, what's it for? What, what, what are they trying to sell? <laughs> um, it's a shame. But that's why we're here to help people ask questions and find solutions. So I think um, I think we pretty much shot that study dead a couple times. It's like a dead Break horse. Down. But uh, I'm going to lead off with a quote. And then Menchi is going to start us off with the first exercise tip. And... This practice is geared at getting you to be mindful at what you're doing when you're at the gym because most people are at the gym with an intent or a goal or a vision in mind for where they want to be. And just by being present and being deliberate with everything you do and with your movements and your activity – you'll get a lot more out of it. So it goes, it's called no trace. When you do something, you should burn yourself completely like a good bonfire, leaving no trace of yourself. Always with the great quotes. Always. I love it. (laughs) Just food for thought to chew on while our listeners listen to us gab on about some exercise tips. So the first tip, I have, I wouldn't even, this is not maybe not pertaining to exercise itself, but just the, the ambition of wanting to exercise sort of a two part tip is show up and do something. A lot of the times I think a lot of people are looking for what is the number one tip to, to get healthy or to gain mass or to do this, to do everything. It's about consistency and it's about doing it over and over again. So show up and do something, show up to the gym, just be there. You've got yourself there. You're going to decide to do something while you're there. It's better than sitting at home and be like, oh, I should have gone there. I should. And the second part of it is, is do something, move around, be active, get the body warmed up in some aspect, in some way. You've already made it there. Do something with the time that you're going to spend there. Even if it's one of these days that you're not going to have a 100% great workout or you're kind of dragging, you're there. Make the best of that day. Get what you need to get done. And then tomorrow you can reassess and give it 100%. Good point. Not so much a a crazy tip, more just – Okay. So guidance for people when they're when no, they're but, but, but when they're going about how to how to um, approach exercising. Like my first one. Let's say, like someone says, Oh hey, I want to start going to the gym. Okay. What should I do? I say just show up and go do something at the gym. That's a start. Once you get there, then we can work into the next tips which I'm sure you're going to take it right away with is you, with your first tip. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. We're going from developmental stages, people. We're going from complete beginner that has never set foot in a gym, doesn't know what working out looks like or feels like, and doesn't really have good body mechanics. So we're going from start to finish here. So I'm going to keep it in line, keep it in theme. And I'm going to say – um, warm up and make it a ritual. Make your warm up like a fucking a ritual because your warm up is going to be the most important thing. It's like the fucking enzyme that you that you need before you digest food. Your warm up is going to allow your body to receive all the stimulus and work that you're about to do. If you look at your warm up as a ritual, you will get better at your warm up every day and you will it'll be your little zen moment to be in your warm up 
and be deliberate with your movements and forget the rest of the day and think about you know your mobility as you are getting prepared to work and do something for yourself um find things that um hit all ranges of motion for all you know your arms your legs think of your hips opening up uh, make sure you're you're warming up just all your joints you're getting good mobility and ranges of motion everywhere and um yeah, again, have a warm-up ritual and treat it like a um, like brushing your teeth has to be done. You just and you for you, gym. it's time to brush. Your what's teeth. your timing on your warm-ups? I know there's oh fifteen. I like to be done. I like to be at whatever I'm about to be starting. You, you know, if I'm squatting or deadlifting, benching, whatever, like I can be using the bar. That's fine, but I want to be. You starting to use the bar, but and I think like that, 15, yeah, and 17 I mean, minutes. there's no right or wrong answer. I think it, it varies sometimes. Sometimes, um, on no, the no, right, 10 to totally. 12 minutes, depending on what day it is, if it's a heavy squat day or uh, a max out day, I'm taking a little more time. If it's more of a dynamic conditioning day, I might be getting in more movements in this short amount of time period might be five to eight minutes. And I think a lot of people miss that one. They'll go to the gym and I, I just want to be clear. Warm up to me doesn't really mean go sit on the treadmill for 10 minutes, but yes, you're going to get warm. So when I see warm up, you can use a treadmill three to four, Three to five minutes. Oh, I like how you're. I like how you're but, breaking oh, down. Some people come in there. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna warm up, and they're just kind of going through the motions for ten minutes on a bike, getting their heart rate up. But physiologically, if you want to look at it, yes, you're warmed up. But but to be fair, what I think what you're saying is Ooh, I should call I like what I one. just said movement prep. Is that, um, is that kind of no, like where you're, what, where you're headed more there? De- defining, we can 100% use movement prep. I was just more defining the warm-up or what I see people do for a warm-up. Or I ask them and they say, oh, I warmed up for 10 minutes. I was like, oh, what would you do? And I'm thinking they're going to give me a, a list of movement prep, stretches, facilitations. Yeah. So you just see them doing a couple of like, arm no, swings. No, and like, no like, I just did a quick, a quick bit, light jog and, and now up. I'm going to go lift. And I'm – Mm, not really. It does. I mean, you have to prep your body for the demands that you're going to put on it. Just yeah, your system's warmed up and your heart rate's up. But if you don't activate the certain muscle chains that you need, are you really that neurologically warmed up? So I, for that one, I think that is a huge and I, yeah. exercise tip coming in on your number one is like you have to have that done. And if you don't do a warm up, you go say you go to the bench and it's you're cold and you're doesn't mean literally you're cold, but your muscles aren't really your system's not upregulated. You might be your muscles aren't ready and tendons and joints aren't ready to take certain amounts of force. And if you jump right into it, some people will be fine and you're able to do that. Neurologically, some people can step on there and be ready to go. Other people that might not be the best thing for their system and systematically they're not ready for this demand that you're going to put on it real quick. That's where injury lies. That's where poor workout lies, poor reps and weight and all that other stuff lies. So. And to your point about the timing, you know, yeah, I've had times where I can get a warm up in and, um, have my clients ready to go 15 minutes into it and we're good to go. But I've also had times where clients come in where they're, they're super locked up or super tight for whatever reason. And we spend, you know, five, 10 minutes on some faster work. And then we get our slow start to get our warm up in. Um, then we got to do like an extra um, activation drill or an inhibition drill because of whatever they came in with. And we don't start like our first round of, our like our first series of our first part of our workout until like 35 minutes in 40 minutes in sometimes. 
and I, we haul ass, we bust ass. And yeah, it was literally like a 30, 35, sometimes 40 minute prep for 20 minutes of intense work. And right. it was still a great workout, you know, that's, but that's how you got to kind of adjust accordingly. Cause yeah, you can kind of know, maybe if you know that you're coming in the next day and you're going to be working out, maybe, maybe, you know, they're coming in Monday through Friday, you're coming in every day that week, Monday, you go in and you're just like, I need to get mobile again. And you just spend, um, you spend an hour just doing fascia work and mobility drills. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it is about just getting your body prepared for accepting the stimulus of the work in a healthy way, both for your fascia, for your body, for your psyche, for, your, you know. Well, you said it the best earlier in this podcast is you're, we're basically our own doctor. You have to listen to how the body feels. I, I, <laughs> which is so funny. I've, cause I've had people who, like it took six months for them to be like, so how, how, how did that feel? And they could respond within five seconds. But starting off, it was like, so how'd that feel? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, where'd you feel that? Like, I'm not really sure. I know where. I'm like, well, well, well wait, wait, what, were you, what were you thinking about? What were you just doing? And, and they're like literally not there. They're like doing work. They're doing so much work because they have a busy life. And they have a lot on their plate. And I totally respect that but it does so much more for you in that hour and your return on your investment in that hour to be present in your, in the best you can. But it's been cool to see people's progression in even just self-awareness and understanding how their body feels and works and being more connected and in tune with their system. You're, you're yeah. like a machine. And I think that's, trying to tap that's into what the warm up's going to do um, best. It helps you tap into and, your uh, system yourself before you're going to really Try to make yes. an adaptation yes. totally. or make a change. Yeah. And before you get, and before you get distracted, cause you're talking to someone at the gym, you, you get that moment to calibrate kind of your, kind of your, your, your movement with your body mechanics, with your breathing. Um, oh. And it is literally like, yeah, I guess it's the best word, calibration. You're, you're literally like calibrating all your systems, full court press to work together for benefiting your health. So, yeah, so with, and, with uh, that, yeah, let's, I want uh, you to roll with your – Let's I, go on another I think tip. it might be your number two. It kind of pertains to the end of what we were just talking about because I think that would be a spot. Okay, right yeah, yeah, yeah. I know go. exactly what you're talking about. I think, I think I know what you're talking about. Here we go. We're, we're about to drop it, people. We don't know if this is the correct one that Eric's thinking of or it, it's not, but I think it is. Um, everybody should do some type of three minutes of aerobic activity before yes. they start working out. Yes. Is that, the, is, that, is that the one? All right, cool. Yeah, I totally agree with this. It is so easy. I used to I used to be that, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, got to get a 10 minute run in, got to get a 10 minute stair mill in, got to get 15 minutes in, um, whatever. So strict in college. And then getting more scientific, learning the nuances of the body and the energy systems and oh, okay, most people can't turn their aerobic system on. Let's turn that fucker on before we get going. Um so I have everybody, you know, knees, ha hips, ankles, and back, um, you know, with, with respect to those areas, I have them run for three minutes. But doing something challenging like a three-minute stair mill or a three-minute row or a three-minute uh, UBX machine, the upper body Cranking extremity away. machine where you're sitting down and just <laughs> basically cycling with your arms, that'll still tire you out. Yeah, that'll still tire you out. Um Anything, incline walk on a treadmill is a good one, but three minutes, three minutes. And it's so funny because all of my, most of my clients are like, you know what the worst part of our workouts are? I'm like, what? Like the, the fucking three minutes you make me run on the treadmill every day. Oh, it's so funny. I, I love it though. But um, it's so important. It's so important. Especially if we're so, we're so carb heavy on our diets already. If we're so 
sugar burning and carb burning in our workout, what do you think the body's going to want after the workout? It's going to want more carbs. It's going to want more sugar. Get the fat burning on. Get all your systems working. It's your oxidative system kind of picking up ATP and energy as it's coming up, coming live, whether if it's from fats or you know, starches that you ate that day or you know starches from your, your, your stored glycogen in your muscle and your liver. Um, get that fat burning going and you'll just be burning more energy throughout and you won't have that that sugar craving and you shouldn't have that low blood sugar feeling after your workout that's usually um, linked to like a low sugar and low blood sugar I yeah it also it me. also helps with um, certain depending yeah. on what your workout's gonna be some people like to jump into straight say it's just weights or high reps and they feel that they get to the point where the lactate's building and they're running through glycolysis and then they're then the body has to adapt and then the aerobic system has to turn on a not again has to has to turn on to meet the demands of the metabolic breakdown that you're doing so in something where you're you're starting your your session with aerobic work already turns that metabolic pathway on so you can be already primed to go into your lifts and or or whatever your lifts your conditioning your your work and that system's already ready to go and you're just turning over ATP, you might feel better. And with this, I don't, it doesn't have to be just three minutes, but I do think that three minute, three minutes is the minimum. Yes. One minute. That's just, it's like the bare minimum. Some, some literature will says anything duration longer than 60 seconds is aerobic. It depends. We won't get into that argument tonight. Um, two minutes isn't bad, but anything over two minutes is you're really, really getting that system on and you're really starting to push that system towards where it wants to be. That's why I love that three minute mark where it's just enough for you to be like, okay, this kind of sucks, but correct. But it's just enough correct. for everybody to be like, I can do it for three Get it minutes. in. Get it done. <laughs> if it feels easy, other certain days you can do up it. that intensity on those and you get more of a threshold training and have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. My second tip. Your turn. Lead us off. Is for anyone is perf perform full body sun, movements bro. every day. So – I used to come from the background like many that were, oh, let me divide my lifts by body parts. And I did too. some days there just weren't compound movements in there. And then you, same thing, you you learn. I've done so many programs over the years and it was in reading what you what you read is compound exercises, which are full body movement exercises have the most demand metabolically on the body. So it's always high. And with that high metabolic demand, it's going to drive all the metabolic processes you need. Certain hormones, fat breakdown, glucose breakdown, all that stuff. And it's the best bang for your buck at that point. If you're coming in and you have certain goals, I mean, this could be if you want weight loss, muscle mass, or anything in between, aerobic capacity, anaerobic capacity, Full body movements is going to train the whole system and you're going to keep that balanced side to side, left to right moving. That's a huge number two for me. A lot of times people are, yeah, they're looking or even, even so sprints. Sprints are a full body movement. Like you're using everything, um, rowing. Versa climber, all that stuff is incorporating all muscle mass of the body, and your systems are going to have to figure out how to deal and literally get all muscles, oxygen, ATP, energy. It's simple, but yet I see people every day just doing certain isolation uh, stuff, and, and uh, I want to be like that is that's good and all, but if you really want more. Like, ah, I, I see 
I see that you got into the fitness industry right. because but of if Arnold you look Schwarzenegger. Like Arnold, that's ah, fine. I see. If you look like you know him, what I mean, it's like it's like people are either into you know, it's like if people are either got into the health and fitness industry because of other reasons, or people got got um, the yeah. bug because they learned about this whole bodybuilding world, and then that's kind of what trickled over is those guys were have a lot more uh, we'll call them injectable supplements um, going on their system that allow for the body to make physical changes uh, that you can see for the muscle to grow by just doing one muscle group a week but even and by then, breaking it down they- it'll grow enough for the next week um, the problem with that is you, you never you never improve your cardiorespiratory system so you're basically adding so much weight and frame to like a little two stroke engine and then the two stroke yeah. engine eventually can't handle all that muscle mass and all that weight and you're just doing damage to your system but back to the full body thing it's amazing when um i think everyone is at some because i was in that life. tube of just doing isolation experience work. and yeah I think so too. Unless you got, unless you got into the health and health and fitness industry because of like Jack Lane, like before the bodybuilding era and and all that stuff or whatever, um, or if you're more geared towards athletics anyway. But so there's a good majority of people who just uh, want to look good, feel good, and they just go by muscle group. Uh, there's nothing wrong with spending a little extra time of accessory work on muscle on on those muscle groups specifically, but you're better off going total body first and then go do your your focus workout but um it's amazing oh, how different yeah. it is it is with um the results like it's it's almost it's teasing people when they do isolation work because you get like such a big pump and that muscle looks so big and and you know vascular and, whatever and you just train it goes like away a, it's just a bicep or a delt it goes away which is um compared to the, the scheme of the body is nothing that's that's why it's my number two i think yeah 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 totally oh, yeah. totally so you get you're getting so much more out of it i, I love that that's one of your tips because it's so important and it's so underutilized like even people in my family my sister in particular she didn't believe me she wanted to she bought programs offline from all these other people because she didn't want to do the workout i wrote her long story mm-hmm. short she eventually did it and she's calling me for a second one and she's badgering me for a second one. And it's just funny because I was just like, right. I can do it. I'm like telling her, I'm like, Some sort I'm not of- a bodybuilder. Like just start doing total body every day. I guarantee you'll get results. And, and when you think about evolutionarily, you know, look at these like r- these Greek gods and their, their sculpted bodies, like the, the statue of David. They didn't go out. Like they got all that from a lot of physical labor and preparing for battle and, and training and stuff like that. They didn't go out and were like, hey guys, today's, Today's leg day. We're just gonna run hills. Like fuck that. They're working their fucking asses off every motherfucking day. Total body every day. And yeah, it's the that, only way to really so, so for me, the that's just when I see in a, full court a lot of gyms I've been to is that people just avoid it. I mean, full body work is is yeah the the, the big movement. So squats, deadlifts, oh, uh, boy. Yeah. you know, push presses, stuff that's complexes that are just multiple exercises put together but you're hitting such an array of muscles and i think a lot of time is people just don't like that feeling like yes your heart rate's going to go up you're going to feel not the best you're going to feel complete fatigued but you're getting the best out of it and a lot of times with this i tell a lot of people squat every day it doesn't have to be the same reps the same exercise some sort of squatting variation every day your metabolic demand is going to increase. It has to. But that's why it's my number two. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. So um, – All right. I'm going to go with this one. Um. Because most people have some tightness or limitation or some pain or irritation. Um, use inhibition techniques. 
use things in a way to shut off and relax an area. Don't overstretch an area. Don't foam roll something to death. Um, don't, you know. No, I roll. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should back up a little bit. If you're having... If you're having really extreme pain, yeah, sure. Go get something scoped. Go get something investigated, x-rayed, whatever. Double check to make sure you're not actually damaged something. But in terms of limited mobility or um, a tight, like one side of the body versus the other or tightness somewhere in general, um, use your – come back to your warm-up. Use time before you get on that treadmill for your aerobic system – to practice some type of inhibition, whether that's just laying on your back and breathing and relaxing or laying on your stomach and breathing and doing alligator breathing, something to shut the system down um, is going to go a long way when you reboot your computer and get it back online with your aerobic uh, workout, three-minute jog, your movement prep. And hopefully yeah, you'll, you'll revisit and it this without is, any sort of kinks I forgot, in the system. I actually forgot about this one. I think this one is another great one that can follow the warm up that you, you just kind of brought up again is be aware of yourself. Be aware of who you are in space and how your body's feeling. And this is this sort of this sort of goes along with with my number Ooh. three. I which like I think that. this is obviously both have it on the list. It's going to be huge. I put be of, be aware of your internal positions. So what what that means is internal position is is what constitutes of you. Where's your rib cage? Where are your legs? Where are your arms? Where's your head? Where are you inside of you before you go do other stuff that puts weights in your hand and you're trying to move other stuff and you're not even settled into your own. So I think with the inhibition work, it's like, it goes hand in hand. So if I come in, Oh, hamstrings are tight. Okay. what that's my body telling me something. This is tight. Maybe I should address this first and what other stuff might be going on before I do any sort of squat deadlift or hamstring movement that I could compromise this. And I think also with this is it kind of goes into the lifting or into the workouts, which the mm. mindfulness. If you want to be present, yes. you want to be present, even when you're going for a one rep deadlift or squat, whatever, you want to be motherfucking present. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Even if you're going for 25 reps, I want you to be focused on every single rep how the body's feeling every rep, what it's feeling, why it's feeling that, how it is. I think it's key because the more mindfulness you are through movements, the more your body connects with itself and more you can be aware of what's going on rather than people just going, hey, I'm going to go 15 squats through the motions and they're not really feeling anything or they don't get anything out of it. This is one where it's got to be like you have to be in tune with yourself when you're working out. Have intent to feel what you want to be doing and you're going to get so much more out of exercise and fitness. And it will help you with the inhibition because if you lay down, close your eyes and start to feel your body and be aware of your body, then all of a sudden you're like, why are my shoulders up by my ears? And then you realize that you've been shrugging all day I long. Or you realize that you've keep, you keep standing and leaning to your left hip or your right hip. And that's why you have tightness in your calf or your hip or your back. Um, yes. And so yeah, I think it's super important to be, be present and use some type of inhibition before you get going. And what Matt just says right there is you can use that in the, say in the warm up. All right, we're doing pick obviously something that's not crazy right off the bat. Uh, Matt, do you do any like hamstring bridges or something or uh, hey, well, just dude, just pick an on. exercise, you know, right? You know, you know, it's dead bugs and right. glute bridges. Everybody, everybody should be doing. But take those. what you just said. Have someone close their eyes 
and take away that visual yeah. sensation. Yeah, yeah. That you could even do in sitting at your desk. Take Ooh, visual you're, stimulation you're, away, and you're going to get a whole I'm do it new I love it. variation, a whole new world because now you your body has to rely of touch, hearing, feeling, ground contact to figure out what's around you. And you're actually going to get a different sense of where you are in totally. space, which totally. – And that's control. That's proper yes, reception. That's injury prevention. Now that's with that, don't do it on like Olympic lifts. Don't just be closing your eyes on certain lifts. <laughs> certain things, certain things, if you want to do a single leg deadlift, close your eyes and see what happens when you take your vision away and you now have to have more – more contact through the floor to keep stable and turn certain muscles on. I 100% challenge people to go try that, and it's going to be a different feel. I'm going to deadlift tomorrow with my eyes closed. I love it. But you know what's funny is I I, um, I never incorporated it in that way. But what I do do, <laughs> what I do do, uh, is uh, I have a lot of skiers and snowboarders out here, so I'll make them – before we do any work on like an endo board or a BOSU ball, whatever, mm-hmm. I'll have them go into a, you know, there's a stand, have them close their eyes and bring their knee to their chest. And I tell them, put your foot down, put your foot down every time you feel like you need to reset, but draw awareness to that right to that planted foot and create that connection and create the connection in your legs. And when you can do that with your eyes closed, you're, strengthening those neural connections to allow for better automatic control, yes. your, auto, your autonomic or your automatic nervous system. Um, and what's great about, um, oh man, I, I miss it. Oh, what's great about that is you're building a, a much stronger mind muscle connection to understand um, how you're going to use that muscle and get, more yeah. uh, bang for the buck out of the load they're putting on it or when it's tight and overactive and needs um, some love and maintenance. But I used to actually, you know, nerdy, nerdy little 17, 18 year old, whatever, <laughs> um, trying to get buff in the muscle or buff in the gym, buff in the muscle, buff in the gym. Um, what you know heard about this mind muscle connection wanted to actually have it and i'm like 120 pounds soaking wet like <laughs> barely 120 pounds and i would stand in the mirror and i would be like chest abs biceps triceps like back like quad hamstring glute calf and just kind of learn how my body had to be to 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 get that muscle to twitch and now I've gotten to a point where I'm like I'm like staring at my foot in a warm up cuz I'm trying to get like my the muscles around my like subtalar joint to 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 pulse. So you can you can you get feedback by staring at these areas and trying to draw connection to them. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Nope. In fact, yeah, a little short story real quick before we got to get back to the topic at hand was this dude at Jimmit. I, I want to get in touch with him and have him on the podcast, but this guy, Kevin, he's doing total body all the time. He had some minor brain damage. He was in a, in a car accident that collapsed his vertebrae, and the, the doctor said, we need to replace your vertebrae with metal vertebrae just so they don't collapse on your organs and you die. And he says, no, they'll have to, that means I'll have to accept that I'll be like this forever. So he spent a year staring at his fingers until eventually he could wiggle them and eventually could move his fingers, could eventually move his hand, could eventually move his wrist, eventually move his elbow. Right, right now doing total, now doing upper body workouts. The next year, he did the same thing with his legs, reestablishing that those neural connections. And people think I'm fucking crazy to say this, but Paul Check of the Czech Institute, he is a man ahead of his time. He does a similar type of treatment on individuals who are quadriplegic and paraplegics and he does it in a developmental manner so he might hold them as if they were a baby and then use reflexology to create that connection between the muscle and the brain he says something's there if i can hit this and it moves something's there all we got to do is strengthen it so it's just uh it's it's really amazing what the body is capable of if you take the time to 
learn it. Yeah, I mean that's a that's gonna be tip number three right there. Bang. <laughs> yeah, right. Brain, brain, roll, well, we learn it, own it, keep learning it, keep doing it. We probably got all our tips in, honestly. I mean, you know, inhibition, aerobic system, um, for three minute jog, movement prep, total body every day. Um what were the other ones you said? You know, do something. Like, just get up and do something. Yep. The other the other two I just have, and I, I don't think this list needs to be big. We, yeah, I don't think so either. The other lists were big because there's a lot into like one it. More. Keep it simple. People listening, very simple. Take the framework that we just gave you, and you can put together a workout. The last two I kind of have are very similar is number four – is have a desired goal or target for that day, that session. When you're going in and walking to that gym, know what you want to get out of that session. Is it, do I want to lift so many weights? Uh, do I want to com- run so many miles or complete so many distance on this bike or rower? Do I want to get 20 sprints in? Do I want to stay in here for 45 minutes? Whatever it is, have a goal and get to that each day. And then just put effort into your work and your time at the gym. So whether it's 20 minutes, 40, 60, enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy put it. effort into that, get your goal. And it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Some days you might go in and be like, Hey, I'm going to do 20 minutes of sprints. Call it a day. That is a great workout done. Boom. I think that's what I have left on my exercise tips. Yeah, I think I'll just make sure I, I make it um, come full circle and just uh, be deliberate, be efficient, no rep wasted, no minute wasted. It's the gym. It's not a coffee shop. Go in there, take care of what you need to take care of and be deliberate with your time and leave no trace of yourself. Don't look back and have regrets. That means you didn't put yourself all the way there in your workout. But just like in the beginning, burn yourself. Leave no trace of yourself. Do it like a bonfire. Holy and full court press. Mind, body, spirit. All directed in one direction. They call it cognitive consonance. Boom. Word of the day. (laughs) Right there. We are... We're on fire. We better just wrap this up before we go another hour. Thank you, people, for listening to us. There's a, obviously a little survey in the show notes. And we got a new website up. But we'll be having a, a launch for it coming up here probably the next year. Um, we got some stuff, some exciting stuff to, to launch and uh, Unveil to you people. make available to, to you guys. And uh, yeah, much love to everyone out there and all of our listeners, and we will see you next time.